Hey there, I'm Trent, and this is the third episode of my Did I Enjoy series of reviews. At the moment, I'm playing unplayed games from my Steam library which have highly positive reviews in order to see if there's anything I've missed out on. I'm streaming all the games I play on my Twitch channel, which I'll put a link for in the description. Give me a follow if you'd like to see my live impressions. Also, make sure to subscribe and leave a like and a comment on this video if you do enjoy, because if you're anything like me, then you love watching other people give their takes on your favorite games. Bleed 2 is an indie shoot 'em up platformer bullet hell type of game which was released on the 8th of February 2017. I've noticed the last three games I've picked up in my unplayed list are all from 2017, and I'm not sure if this is a coincidence that all these games are highly rated, or whether 2017 was a good year for games. I suppose we will find out as I continue this series. As its name suggests, Bleed 2 is a successor to a previous game titled Bleed, which looks to be a similar type of game. I did not play Bleed 1, and I do not own it, so I won't be able to comment on any improvements made since the previous game, I'll only be able to give my opinion on this one. Bleed 2 currently has a 96% positive review rate on Steam, with around 450 reviews, and is available at full price on its own for $10, or about £7, and is also available in a combo pack with Bleed 1 for about $13, or £9. I'm going to preface this review by saying I only played the game for about 3 hours before I had had enough and wanted to do something else. If you're a fan of this game, it's not all bad, just hear me out in the next few sections. The graphics are pretty good, everything in this game is pretty clear and distinct, which is positive. There were a few times where I got hit by something I didn't realize was going to hit me, but I'm going to chalk that up to me being bad. The game, however, is called Bleed and I don't recall seeing a drop of blood during my gameplay. There's no gore in this game as you're mainly fighting robots, so I'm not sure if the game's name is meant to be ironic or what, but you don't need to worry about blood splats. The thing to say about movement in this game is that the game obviously has a very high skill cap. What I mean by this is I can't really dissect the game fairly without putting way more time than I'm willing to in order to get good. Though, I mostly didn't have a problem with movement or dodging things once I was warmed up a bit. I played with an Xbox controller and the controls were basically as follows. Left stick to move, right stick is an omnidirectional fire, left trigger is for slowing time, and right trigger is to jump slash dash. To be honest, I did not absolutely pick up the controls straight away. I regularly forgot that right trigger was for jump and kept pressing the A button out of habit and it took far too long for me to regularly use the slow time mechanic for precision jumping and avoiding getting hit. This is one of the reasons why I'm hesitant to criticize because this is a very specific type of genre that I don't often play, and even worse, it's a genre that takes a lot of time to build muscle memory and reaction times. Playing the game on the main character was fine, and I didn't have any complaints about the game up until I finished the campaign after about 90 minutes. In each level, there is basically six sections, with a few exceptions on some of the levels. You more or less go from Corridor 1 to Boss 1, to Corridor 2 to Boss 2, to Corridor 3 to Boss 3, with a checkpoint at the beginning of each section. There's no real punishment for taking damage or dying in terms of progressing through the levels, as if you die, you just go back to the start of the section you were on. However, if you're going to try and maintain a score and keep that running high, you're going to need to play fast and precise. At the end of each level, you're awarded a total score based on the score you achieved throughout the level in addition to three score multipliers which increase or decrease your overall score depending on how well you did. There are three multipliers, time, which is how fast you went, damage, which I'm not 100% sure on, but I think it decreases based on how many times you got hit, and style, which is built throughout the run by hitting enemies and reflecting projectiles, but this is severely lowered if you get hit or take damage. Safe to say, on my first playthrough of the game, I did not score any better than like a C or a D, because I was getting hit by everything and going rather slowly. Going from the main character on my first campaign run to some of the other characters was extremely jarring, as all the other characters more or less move, fire, and use abilities differently. This probably contributed to some of my dislike of the game, because I couldn't get into the characters quickly, and they mostly didn't feel good to play straight off the bat. The robot called White was the first additional character that I tried to play, and its gimmick is that it gets stronger the more your style meter fills up. 
Given that you lose style points when hit, I was often in low tier style with low range and low damage and it just felt absolutely awful to try and recover. It would not surprise me if someone who was any good at the game could play the robot and the robot was actually the best character because of its style meter scaling. However, it's not a character you just pick up and mess around with and hope for the best. I got to a point when trying the robot out that I just exited the campaign and swapped to a different character because it just felt that bad. The other characters include the rival, which is a clone of the main character, except they use yellow instead of purple and reflect yellow bullets as a result. I didn't play this character because I read its description and didn't really want to waste my time playing something that played identical to the main character. You also have the Clawed Girl, which is an almost melee range style character which can hover while attacking and every time you hit something, you refresh your dash and can just chain dash attack dash attack if you're good enough. The last character I tried was called Valentine, who is the baddie of the game. Funnily enough, this was the character I enjoyed playing the most because of how easy it felt compared to the others. As a character, Valentine flies instead of walks and jumps, which means it's very easy to position and has a projectile shield which is permanently active. You only need to press the slow time button to swap the shield from yellow to purple and you can absorb all the bullets of the relevant color. Instead of the slow time mechanic, you slowly charge your action bar by absorbing bullets and can release a laser beam to do big damage. This is the only character I managed to get a decent score on with any level, as I basically didn't die or take much damage using the shield and flying. Flying is just so much easier to dodge and kill things quickly with. There are three additional modes to play in the game other than the story. Arcade, Endless, and Challenge. I didn't play any of these modes, and I don't really care to play any of the modes. I don't want reaffirmation of how bad I am at the game, and I don't want to put in the time to get good at the game when the game is 5 years old, nobody's heard of it, and I'm not particularly bothered. However, Arcade is probably more of the challenge I would be looking for out of a game like this, which is tackling the game on a single life. This would be very hard to do, and I can tell just by looking at the completion rate of Steam achievements that the vast majority of people who play this game don't even beat the story on normal mode with infinite lives, let alone any difficulty on one life. Personally, I played the game on hard, and the completion rate that I could see was 11.5%. The other two modes, Endless Mode, is a randomly generated level simulator, and Challenge Mode, which is a triple boss encounter for those who just want pain. Again, looking at the achievement completion rates for campaign score for S rank, as well as the Endless and Challenge Mode completion rate, these are all single figure percent achievements. Therefore, if you like having gold achievements on Steam, this is actually a game where you could farm a lot of them if you wanted to put the time in. As for progression in this game, there is no character progression whatsoever. You unlock characters after beating the final boss on certain difficulties. Other than that, you only have personal skill progression and chasing high scores. I would like to note that I didn't beat the game on very hard, so there is actually one character that I didn't unlock. The story in this game is basically irrelevant to the game and the gameplay in all aspects. You originally play as a character who is called Rin, and you're defending your city or the world from whatever baddie has come to take over and destroy. Don't come into this game thinking about any type of plot, you're here to shoot stuff, dodge bullets, and slow time. This is obviously not a problem because the story is not core to this type of game. This game is about high score, perfect play, and high skill. The bosses in this game all have unique designs and are more or less decent to fight against. Attacks are fairly well telegraphed, as they should be for a type of game where the goal is not to get hit. A couple of the bosses I felt had cheap and awkward attacks to dodge on the fly, which was really annoying, but I'm sure if you were to break down the boss mechanics and movement, there's a way to dodge them every time for someone who's looking to make sick plays. Now for my overall impressions. This is not a bad game, it's just not for me. Mostly because I don't want to sink what I would feel like would be mega hours into it in order to get better and chase high scores. There's basically no substance in the campaign, and while I don't think there was intended to be, I do think there should have been fewer checkpoints. Going from corridor to boss and dying should have responded to you at the start of the corridor rather than the boss in order to be a bit more punishing, in my personal opinion. If the story was significantly longer, then I'd say you'd be fine to have frequent checkpoints, but there's no real time gate in order to keep someone playing the campaign, 
unless they're after chasing high scores and perfect play on reruns. I definitely say if you are someone who is addicted to perfection and high scores then you could get a lot of time out of this game. I normally don't ever recommend buying a game when it's not on sale because games go on sale on Steam literally all the time, but if you know that you personally are someone who likes these kinds of games and you like doing high scores, extra levels and boss rushes, then paying full price for this game would be an absolute steal. Having multiple characters with different abilities and learning to do perfect runs with each character would take ages and this is a good thing for money spent and the time value of the game itself. If you made it this far then thank you for checking out episode 3 of my series. Unfortunately I didn't really enjoy this game, it's not for me and I don't have the time to get good at it. But there is an audience of people who would 100% salivate over this game and what it has to offer. Hopefully, you're one of these people and you can pick it up at a decent price. Remember to subscribe and leave a like and a comment on this video if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.